Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and today I'm joined by Steve. And we just finished playing the old classic Backgammon. Uh, and he's got a very nice set here. They often come in these little briefcase sets. Uh, essentially, uh, one of you takes the white pieces, and one of you takes the black pieces, and you are trying to work your way. So, in this case, I was white. Uh, sorry, no, Steve was white, I was black. Uh, and I'm trying to work my pieces all the way along here, and then kind of round here and get them into the to the hole. I'm guessing that probably has a special name at the end here. Uh, the way it works is I roll the dice, you always roll two dice, and you use these numbers kind of separately to move the different uh, pieces. So I've got a one and a three, so I could take this one, and I could go one, and I could take the next one. Oh, sorry, no, that was one there. So I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three. and then, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't move this one, because that's the next spot and it's in the way. So uh, maybe I could move this one to one here. And then Steve rolls his dice. Steve's a bit more experienced at this than I am. And he does four and then two. And you can see what he's trying to do here is not leave one exposed like that. Because if you roll the dice and you manage to have enough to land on one, so I'd be rather foolish in leaving my pieces here. If Steve rolled the dice and managed to get enough to kind of go, what is he, one, two, three, four, five, six, then he captures this piece, which goes on the board here. And then when it's my turn, I roll my dice, and before I can allow to move any other pieces, I've got to try and get this piece off, and it kind of goes all the way back to the start, effectively. So what have we got? A four and a five here. So from the start, uh, one, two, three, four, I can't go here because he's blocking them. If it's a single piece, I could jump there and capture him, but because it's double, I can't. So I'd have to go in the five spot. Uh, and then my other roll, my four, I could use for something else, and that'd be fine. But if I couldn't go here, if Steve had managed to block all those things, then I'd just be stuck and this would stay here and I'd miss my turn. So a big part of the strategy here is you're trying to arrange sets of these, at least two or more, to kind of block people. So it's very difficult for me to move these pieces now, because if I roll, was it one, two, three, four or five, I just can't move them. Uh, so effectively, you're trying to get all your pieces around and once they're all in your home territory, you're gonna find you've got lots sort of in this territory here, you can then start, I think it's called bearing off. And effectively, once they're all in this section, you can then start moving them into here. So I'd be rolling my dice again, and for five, I could take this one and go one, two, three, four, five, and it pops into the end. Now, once you've got all your pieces into the end, you win. Uh, there's a little bit more to do it in terms of doubling. You can kind of effectively bet on the outcome of the game. Uh, but essentially, that's how it plays. What do you think? I like Backgammon. I don't consider it necessarily a board game night game. I think it's much more of a, I'm sitting at home, I'm just chatting to someone, we're playing Backgammon and talking about other things because I've played it quite a lot and I can kind of do it. Not quite second nature, I'm still thinking about the game, but it's just very, you're kind of moving pieces around and you can play game after game after game. It's a, uh, it is an abstract game, but it's got dice in there as well, so there is no best move. There are moves that are bad and good, but there might be, in a certain position, there might be lots of tactical. Do I, do I maybe if I roll a two and a three, in this particular situation, if I roll a two and a three, let's say that was the case, if I roll a two and a three, well that's not necessarily an awful move. I'm leaving two pieces, but the odds that Jonathan can capture them in this roll, he'd need exactly a six to land here, and then a three or a four. That's very unlikely. And the fact is, once I've done that, I can, if I then roll a six and a three, I can block them up. And obviously when you're getting these big blocks, um, it's really hard for Jonathan to get these pieces out. Effectively, that's the ideal situation. It's called a prime. Six in a row means these two pieces, whatever happens, cannot get past. So obviously if you can set something like this up, and to do that, you have to take risks. There's no way you're gonna be necessarily lucky enough every game to do that. You have to kind of leave these individual pieces and hope that you can fill up without being taken yourself. I think it's really good. I think the addition of the doubling dice makes this into a really complicated game. It might feel like it's just a dice rolling game and whoever rolls the best wins, and that is not the case. There is a lot of skill in this game. Um, and the more you kind of play it, the more you can see which moves are good and bad. Rating? I really like it. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. Okay. Yeah, it is a classic, and I think it's well deserved. As Steve says, it's not the kind of game that's going to absorb you in sort of deep thought. Um, but on a kind of lazy Sunday afternoon, you know, sitting outside playing a few hours of backgammon, I think it's very relaxing. Uh, so I certainly enjoy playing it in that kind of setting. Uh, personally, I'd probably want to play heavier games generally. Um, and as Steve says, although you'd think it's a bit random with all the dice, because you're rolling so many dice through the games, and particularly if you play multiple games with using the doubling die, actually it does become far more skillful. The luck kind of balances itself out. Knowing when to take the risks, you were saying, is uh, a key part of the strategy. So I think it's very good. I think I'd be on a six out of 10 personally, uh, but I could see some people just, as I say, playing this for hours and hours and hours and having a great time. All right, thanks very much for watching. That was... Backgammon!